my Hebrew brothers and sisters, the 12 tribes of Israel scattered all over the globe. Welcome back. This is your Moray Yeshu Ben Uriah Israel. And I just want to take this moment to thank you so much for your subscriptions. Many of you have subscribed over the past weeks and, and, and just want to tell you that all the subscribers, I, I appreciate you, I love you, and thank you. But let me say this, of all that is going on, I just want to tell you thanks for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. This, this um, past July and August, basically, been what you call like a, a roller coaster, you know? All kind of issues and different things that came up that we have to um, pay attention to and uh, attend it to, rather. So we just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I, want to, I want to talk to you today on a verse that been thrown around so much time, but uh, as Hebrew Israelite, we want, we want to look at it from a different aspect, okay? Um, in, in, in the church, I've heard this verse over and over and over and over. So the verse been um, applied to, to Christianity, basically. But this verse, you know, there's some technicality about this verse. And many times, you know, in, in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, many times, many times this verse is, is used and is used out of context. Okay? But I want to, use, I want, I want to say some things today that over my, my time of studies and, you know, looking at the verse and looking at the people that the verse was, you know, was written to and, and the occasion, you know, the purpose, the occasion of it that arrived to this, to this, what causes Yahuwah to make these statements in, 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 in Second Chronicles chapter 7. Okay, now what we want to do, listen to what the verse said. The verse said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Okay, now, so the Christian church, and I'm, I'm not knocking it, okay? I'm not knocking the Christian church. I was a Christian for over 30 years, okay? I'm not knocking it. But I'm just saying some of the, the fallacies and the, the things that have been said and, we, and how the verse is used. The way the, the, way the church is, uses verse is basically like, there's no Israelite. <laughs> there's no Israelite. We, are not, we don't exist. We do not exist. It's like they have taken over and everything is changed. Yahuwah changed it from the way he, he wanted to be and he's given it to the Christians. So now the Christian is like a new, a new, a new kingdom, a new king in, in town. So, you know, you listen to what we said and not what Yahuwah said. Okay, so, and all of these blames, all of these blames had to do, and, and, and I, would, I would attribute it, these blames to the church fathers, uh, the so-called church fathers, because they're the ones that came up with a lot of these different tenets. Uh, you know, they, they, they take the scripture and turn it around and make it, and westernize it, okay, westernize it. So we, we have a lot of westernization in the scripture rather than the way that Yahuwah had said it in the original text. Right. So one of the things, and, and the, the, the key to understanding of this, this verse, basically, you know, is the context. We have to look at the context. When, when the first thing I learned when I was in seminary 
you know, when you're dealing with biblical interpretation and you're dealing with, with hermeneutics and exegesis. Those are two of the main things that we dealt with, you know, in, in, um, in, in, in seminary and Bible college. Okay, so, so we have to look at, at the, the, the immediate context of this, of this um, verse, right? We have to look at the immediate context. You know, when we, when we look at the verses that were before, okay, okay, and we're going to look at that. Um, and then we're going to look at the verses after that. Uh, you know, after the verses before Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. And the verses after Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. We, we, we may not be able to do it in one session, so we happily come back and, you know, to, to, to follow up on this if we did not, you know, get to, to where we really want to get to in this verse. But um, we want to look at it, as, as, you know, as not only the, the, the context in, in the larger um, sense of this, this as the scripture was, was was written there, but we want to look at it, you know, it, as we look at the overall setting and the overall story of this verse, okay? Because you know, there's also a historical element, and there, there, there's a historical, and there's also I would refer to as a cultural element. To you know, to 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 this, um, to this, you know, context. So, you know, like we talk about the, you know, the how 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 the verse was understood, you know, in its original setting, the Hebrew. Okay, the the reason why why you know. We don't understand the scripture the way we should, is because of the westernization of the scripture. You know, the way it was understood then, they take it to make it to like like it's today. The scripture is written today. It's just like it just been written. It's a, it's like an, an author just write a book and then just turn it out and so on. so okay, everybody get gravitated to this this book and start reading it, but they don't have a full understanding of of the original audience to, into which the book was written, okay? So in light of, of, the, of the history and, and, and the culture, okay, we want to look at it in that sense, right? Because context is so important, my brothers and sisters. Context is so important, and you can take a scripture, and you, 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 know, you can read it, you can interpret it, and you hear they talk about taking the text out of the context, right? This is what happened. When you take the text out of the context, you take it and you read it and you, you put a meaning to it that sometimes the meaning, sometimes you may hit it, you may just hit it, right? Sometimes you hit it, right? But most times the meaning, you know, is, is, is significantly different, my brothers and my sisters, significantly different. So as we approach the, you know, the, the, the verse, this is what again we're going to say, when we consider the immediate context, okay, after Solomon dedicated the temple, remember our cousin Solomon, right? He did, dedicated the, 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 the temple, right? And Yahuwah appeared to him, and Yahuwah gave him some warning, okay? And my brothers and my sisters, the warning that Yahuwah gave Solomon is, 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 is still in existence. The warning is still good for us as Hebrew Israelite people. So we, do, we don't go listen to some ignorant people to tell you, oh, well, that was the Old Testament and, you know, we don't have to listen to it. But he, he gave him some warning, and he also gave him some reassurance, okay? If you go back to chapter 6, uh, in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 6, okay, you see where, after Solomon had 
completed the temple, building the temple, that Solomon started to pray. Right? And he prayed to Yahuwah and asked him, in the dedication of this temple, he asked him to bless it and to, to, to make it a place where Yahuwah can dwell. He asked for that, that kind of blessing. Okay? And so, how did Yahuwah respond to Solomon? He responded to him. He responded to him in the, 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 the place, the sanctuary, the whole place was filled with smoke. He appeared to him that, in, a, in that sense. Okay? Filled with smoke. And, and then, you know, told him that, first of all, that the place, the place was not large enough. <laughs> Listen, the question is in, 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 in um, Second Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 18, I like to read that. He said, But will Elohim really dwell with men and the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. That is what you were saying there. How much less this house which I have built? So, Solomon recognized at the outset, in the, you know, as, as he, he was praying his prayer of dedication. You know that the heavens of heaven, Yahuwah is so magnificent, so big, so holy, so great, so almighty, the El Shaddai. <laughs> Praise his name. The El Shaddai, the almighty, right? He is so, and Solomon recognized him as being so great that he have to ask the question, will this building, will, 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 will Yahuwah, will Elohim dwell in the building made with his hand? He said, so he, he recognized at the beginning, and he also said that Yahuwah was so great, and the heavens of heavens, you know, you talk about the whole universe, my brothers and my sisters, the whole universe. You see, you see right now, they're, they're getting ready to launch this, this I think it's today or tomorrow, they're gonna, I don't know. They're going to launch this, um, this uh, space craft from Kennedy, right? And they're going to go up beyond the moon to, and they're going to go around, you know, travel around to take pictures and different things before they put a man into that spacecraft, right? So they're going to go empty and, and do it. But it's so vast, because most time we talk about heaven, you think about a little place, right? The heaven of heavens, there's a whole lot of heavens up there. In that, the, the, the place where Yahuwah dwell, we refer to it as heaven too, but he's, he's not in a in space up there. Uh, one, one Russian man, he go up there and say, you know, astronaut, our cosmonaut, he say he didn't see any God. <laughs> You think Yahuwah is going to put himself in a position where human beings, sinful people, you know, who don't know him as well, I'm going to come see him sitting on his throne. My brothers and my sisters, he's on the throne of your life. He's right here with us in our, in our hearts. And he promises that he's going to come back and set up a rule and we're going to be with him. He's going to live within us, among us. Okay. You know, it, 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 he created all those vast universes, you know, and, and the different planets. And can you imagine the earth that we're living on, the size of it? They can't imagine the moon. Can you imagine the sun? Can you imagine the stars and all? He's bigger than all of those. He's bigger than all of those, my brothers and my sisters. So then, Solomon recognized that Yahuwah has to be bigger than all of that to dwell among us. That's what he said. And we're going to come back because the time will not allow us to finish. He said, Yahuwah appeared to Solomon and said, I have heard your prayers and have chosen this place to be my temple of sacrifices. 
He said, when I shut up the heaven, so there is no rain, I command the locusts to devour the land or, you know, sh you know, send pestilence or plague among my people. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. My brethren, I will continue. My time is run out. But I want you to be a blessing to someone today and walk with the king. Shalom.